Hi everyone, this is Ms. Romani, and for today's lesson, we're going to be learning about the cell cycle and mitosis. In the previous lesson, it was mentioned that our bodies go through a process by which our cells get replaced. Some may even say that most of our body cells get replaced every 10 years. So let's talk about that. But to do this, we first need to understand something about the cell cycle. So when we talk about cell division, we're referring to something called the cell cycle. The cell division part of the cell cycle is only a small part of that process. The cell cycle is basically a continuous sequence during which cells in our body grow during a stage called interphase and then divide through a process called mitosis. And the function of cell division and mitosis can be threefold. The first one, of course, like we discussed, is reproduction. For certain asexual organisms, like say the hydra or the starfish, the way that the hydra makes its little bud is through mitosis, cell division. It just makes extra cells, and the cells eventually become its bud, and then breaks off. Or the starfish will regenerate its arm, and the arm will re regenerate the rest of the starfish through cell division called mitosis. For most plants and animals that reproduce sexually, Cell division is basically there for growth. This is how we grow. We may need to make new cells so that we can grow bigger. A baby does not become adult size by having their cells become bigger. A baby becomes adult size by growing more cells, by cell division. You know, we all actually started out as a single cell called a zygote. And then that single cell divided and divided and divided until we became a, a, an actual baby that was born. And by now, there are trillions of cells in your body, and you got those cells through cell division. The other reason why we need to undergo cell division is because we need to repair our body tissues. We're constantly replacing old tissues, worn out tissues, and repairing damage that is done through injury and, and as we age. So we need to make new cells to repair damaged tissue or replace those worn out cells. If you break a bone, the bone gets set and eventually gets healed by cell division. Bone cells reproduce, make new bone cells, and basically seal the cut. If you break your skin open and you get a cut, the same thing happens to your skin. So let's talk for a little bit about the timing of some cell division that happens within our body. Because even though we're constantly replacing our body cells, this replication of those cells, the replacement of those cells does not happen at an equal timeline. So for example, to replace the cells that are in our stomach lining, in our intestine, in, in our gastrointestinal tract, we take about one to three days to replace. And that's because this area of our body is under constant stress. I mean, we have food moving right through it. So the lining of our intestine and our stomach is constantly being replaced and our skin it's replaced every 20 days. Not all at once. We're not snakes. We don't shed our skin all at once. It's not like we walk around on day 19 looking horrible and then emerge fresh underneath our skin on day 20. That'd be cool. That's not how it works. At this time right now, all over your skin, you have some cells that are on day one, some that are on day five, some that are on day 20. And we basically are constantly just replacing our skin cells. When our skin cells die, they fluff off into the air, or if we shower, they go down the drain in the shower, or we take a bath, they end up in the water in the bath. A lot of the dust that we see in our homes is essentially the old skin cells from your body and your family's bodies that are just in the air. Our blood is replaced every 120 days. So if you've ever donated blood and you, or if you've ever received blood, a blood transfusion, you're thinking, well, will you always have someone else's blood in your body? No, that's not the case. Our blood cells are not there forever. They get replaced every three months or so. So we are constantly replacing our blood cells. Our immune cells will take about, depending on the type of immune cell, between 10 hours to years for them to undergo cell division. So we have some immune cells that are in our body for years. Those are the, the cells that carry our immunity. And some of them are just like some white blood cells might only last a few hours. Fat cells, we replace every 10 years or so. Bone cells might last between a few days to 25 years, depending on the type of bone cell that we have. And finally, brain cells and nerve cells. This is the one that is the longest lasting out of all the cells. And they pretty much last, some of them, a human lifespan. 
we are born with almost every brain cell that we'll ever have. We actually still continue to grow our brain for the first two years of life. So this is why they say that it's extremely important to make sure that we feed babies a good diet because for the first two years of life, we're still developing our brain and actually growing our brain. And after that, our brain can still make connections and we can get smarter, but we don't grow new brain cells. And sometime around the age of 18, 20, 25, then the process will start where brain cells will slowly start to die. And so when brain cells die, unfortunately, that's it. We don't regenerate them. They don't divide again. This is why brain injuries can be so devastating or spinal cord injuries as well because nerves are also, especially our spinal cord nerves, they do not divide. So any injury does not get healed. Unlike breaking a bone where the bone cells can sort of divide in order to heal, the same is not true of nerve injury. This is the first few days of a tadpole's life. And as you can see, at first, the cells just get smaller and smaller and smaller. This is the very beginning, and eventually it's going to go through a process where the, the cells will actually get bigger as they divide. At first, the initial cell is really big, and then cell division is happening, and you end up with more and more and more cells. And then, you know, soon enough, it's going to slow down a little bit. The cells will get bigger and before they start to divide, and then they'll start a process called differentiation, where the cells will, you know, some will become skin cells, some muscle, some eye cells, brain cells, and so on. So let's talk about the cell cycle, and we'll talk about the stages of it now. So there's the first stage, and this is the stage where the cell is just growing, living its life, doing what it needs to do. It's called interface. And cells basically, depending on the type of cell, will spend most of their life on interphase. Brain cells, for example, will spend 85 years on interphase. This is the stage where the cell is just busy living and doing its job. Intestinal lining cells might spend maybe two days on interphase and then one day on dividing. This is the stage that is usually the longest time span. And interphase is divided up into three stages or three phases. At the beginning, is called the G1 stage. The cell just grows, does its job. Then we end up with the S phase. This is where the cell continues to grow, but now it's also busy making a copy of its DNA. And that is because when the cell divides, which is the next stage after interphase, we need to have two copies of the DNA so that each new cell is genetically identical to the original cell. Every cell needs to have all the DNA. So before a cell divides, it needs to make a copy of the DNA. And so that happens during an interphase, before cell division even begins. And then the last stage is called the G2 stage. And this is when the cell is now going to grow in preparation for cell division. It's going to grow bigger and make any final preparations that it needs in order to actually divide. And so the division stage is also called the mitotic stage. And it's the shortest event of the cell cycle. And it involves mitosis which is the division of the nucleus, and it's separated into four stages as well, which we're going to get into, and cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm and the rest of the cell, so the, all the rest of the organelles that does not include the nucleus. So to recap, most of the time, the cell is just growing and doing its job, doing its thing being a brain cell, being a skin cell, doing skin cell things. Then it starts to get ready for cell division. And so still through an interface, it will make a copy of its DNA, it will get bigger, and it will prepare for cell division. Then it enters what is called the mitotic stage, the division stage. And for that stage, there's mitosis and cytokinesis. So, I'm going to give you a little bit more detail about what happens during each of these stages. So I have this animation here that will go through the different stages of mitosis, starting with interphase, moving all the way through all the different stages of mitosis, which we call PMAT for prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And so I want you to focus on what's happening to the nucleus and more specifically what is happening to the chromosomes. So we start with interface. There's the cell. You can see the nucleus is right there in green. And the first thing that's going to happen is the nuclear membrane is going to disappear. And when that starts happening, that's prophase. And then metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. And I know it was too fast, 
So let's start by looking at interface. So interface, like I said before, this is the stage where the cell is just growing. This is not the cell division stage. This is the stage that the cell spends most of its time just doing its job. But prior to cell division, during the G2 phase of interface, the centrioles in animal cells will double. Plant cells do not have centrioles, so this does not happen in plant cells. But in animal cells, the centrioles, which play a role in cell division, which you'll see in the next few slides, they make a copy of themselves because you need two sets of centrioles. The other thing that you will notice during interphase is that the nuclear membrane is present, the nucleolus is present, the chromosomes are not present or visible yet. DNA is organized as chromatin at this stage, so like that loose sort of stringy spaghetti. But by the G2 stage, the chromatin has made a copy of itself, the DNA has replicated, that happened during the S phase. So during interphase, chromatin does make a copy of itself, the DNA replicates, and it starts just preparing for cell division by making copies of centrioles and sometimes also making copies of other organelles. So this is what interphase looks like in an actual cell under the microscope. So it's it's a little bit more difficult to obviously recognize the different stages when you look at them under a microscope for a real cell as opposed to just an, a picture that is drawn. But for interphase, in order to recognize it, what you're looking for is you're looking for a fully visible nucleus. So you can see the nuclear envelope, you can see the nucleolus. You do not see individual chromosomes. The chromatin just looks like a shadow. Now, prophase is when we begin mitosis, and this is the beginning of cell division. Prophase starts by the centrioles moving to opposite sides of the cells. And these little fibers, protein fibers called spindle fibers, start to appear in between and shooting out of the centrioles. The chromatin will start to condense and the chromosomes will now become visible. And the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus both disappear. And so now you start to see the crumbling of the nucleus. The nucleus will reappear by the end. But during cell division, the nucleus is gone, and the chromosomes remain, and they will become more visible as they become condensed. This is what prophase looks like under the microscope. It's a little bit different. You can have different appearances of prophase depending on whether it's early on, like in the picture on the left there, you see that one pointing to early prophase. You can start to see that the nuclear membrane is starting to fall apart, and then by late prophase, the nuclear membrane is completely gone. The key with prophase is that you see the chromosomes as more condensed structures as opposed to the sort of blurry shadow that you see during interphase, and that you either see the nuclear membrane disappearing or no nucleus at all. The next stage is the metaphase stage. And metaphase is distinctive because by this point now, the spindle fibers have attached themselves to the chromosomes, to the centromeres of the chromosome. Spindle fibers are made out of proteins called microtubules. They essentially act like rope and they hook on to the centromere of the chromosomes and they move them around. And what they do is they've actually moved the chromosomes so that they are not just gathered in the middle of the cell where the nucleus was, but they're all lined up along what is called the equator of the cell in a single file going from one end of the cell to the other and just line them up in the middle all one by one. So the centromere is the place where the spindle fibers attach. The spindle fibers are those protein fibers that are shooting out of the centrioles, and you can see the chromosomes very visible. Now, even under the microscope, metaphase is actually one of the easier ones to recognize. You can see right here on both the right and the left pictures, the, the one on the right, by the way, the one that looks more like a circle is an animal cell. The one on the left is a plant cell. You can see the chromosomes sort of lined up right in the middle of the cell. The next stage after that is anaphase and what is going to happen during anaphase is that the spindle fibers who that are still attached to the centromeres are going to start to shorten and as they do they're going to split the centromeres in two and so what will happen then is the sister chromatids, the identical copies of the DNA that you would find in the chromosome that are going to be moved to opposite poles of the cell, and they're going to be moving towards the centrioles. So the chromosomes were lined up at the equator, and now they're moving towards the poles of the cell. As the centrioles split, because the spindle fibers that are sort of holding onto them are tugging on them, and then they're moving to opposite sides. 
And then this is what Anna face looks like under the microscope. You can clearly see that the chromosomes are now split and moved to opposite ends. Now you can see also some spindle fibers in the middle and between, and that is because there are also some fibers that are growing in between the two poles to just sort of make the cell a little bit longer. And finally, we have telophase. And telophase is going to be the final stage of mitosis. Mitosis is all about dividing up the DNA from one nucleus into two nuclei. And so it's going to be about reforming the nuclei. And you'll find that it's a lot of the same steps that happen during prophase, but opposite. So for example, the spindle fibers now disappear. They're no longer needed. Once the chromatids have moved to opposite poles, the spindle fibers will disappear. The nuclear membrane will reappear around the chromatids that are now on each new end of the cell. The nucleolus will also reappear. The chromosomes will then uncoil and become chromatin again. And while telophase is happening, a process called cytokinesis is also happening. So cytokinesis is essentially the division of the rest of the cell, but it's happening at the same time as telophase and the formation of the two new nuclei in each of the new cells. So during cytokinesis and telophase, you cannot tell one from the other. So when you look at them under the microscope, you, you find a cell that is under cytokinesis, it is simultaneously undergoing telophase and vice versa. So let's take a look at what happens during cytokinesis. You can see it's the same picture because this basically happens simultaneously. So during cytokinesis, this is when we describe what is happening to the cytoplasm and to the organelles and to the membrane and cell wall if you're talking about a plant cell. So the cytoplasm and the organelles divide. For animal cells, as the cell gets bigger and elongated, a cleavage furrow will form in the membrane in the middle which is essentially what we call when the membrane starts to pinch inward and eventually meets from the top to the bottom and splits into two cells. And we call that indentation, we call that a cleavage furrow. Plant cells, on the other hand, do not form a cleavage furrow because they have a cell wall. And so what needs to happen is the formation of a new cell wall. And so a plant cell will get longer and the cell wall will form right in the middle in pieces at first that eventually just become one solid wall. That cell wall that is in construction is called a cell plate. So when the cell wall is built, we call it a cell wall, and it's now two separate cells that are attached because plant cells sort of attach to each other. When it's forming, we call that a cell plate. And that's that. And so as you can see at the top, you can see all the different stages, what it looks like when we draw a picture of it, and then underneath what it looks like when you actually see it under the microscope in real life. Next, we're going to learn about sexual reproduction in meiosis, which is a very similar process to mitosis. So a good understanding of mitosis will certainly help understand meiosis. And so that's it for this lesson. Have a great day, everybody.